Foot Clan, this is the episode you've been waiting for. Our bold predictions for 2020. And spoiler alert, we actually got four out of six right last year. I don't know how. You want to tune in and hear this year's. Don't forget to subscribe. Foot Clan, we're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, are we not? Mm hmm. Well, I got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot at managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. It's an age-old story. Of course. If you like a show with big laughs and a lot of heart, then this is the one you've been looking for. Watch Ted Lasso right now on the Apple TV app. Subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Thursday, September 3rd, the Fantasy Footballers. One, one week. One week. One week. One week. One week. You know what I was doing last night? I was watching the Patriots play the Ravens. Were you oh, really? I was. It was spectacular. <laughs> Sometimes I just, it hits, no preseason, right? Right. And so that must have been, oh yeah, football. Oh, it was, it was, it was a joyous occasion. It, who, who won? I don't want to tell you. Oh, yeah. I don't <laughs> want to spoilers here, I don't want to Mike. spoil that game for you, but it was definitely the game where the Patriots were undefeated, Yeah, and it was the Lamar Jackson is burning everything to the ground. Can he take care of the Patriots? And he got the couple rushing touchdowns and came through for another big fantasy day. We had our Listener League draft yesterday, and for the first time in my life, I have Lamar Jackson on a fantasy roster. I just plain wanted to see... What happens when you have Lamar Jackson? It, it, we talk about the quarterback and when you take them in drafts. and But we also say, look, if you knew, I, I, I would say this is my advice on that. If you knew Lamar Jackson would give you what he gave you last year, if that's what you believe in your heart, you should take him wherever the heck you want. Yeah. I mean, statistically speaking, his gap between him and the number two quarterback would have been big enough, not to mention his consistency, would have been big enough to justify taking him at the at that's, the one-on-one, if you want. That's true. And also, statistically speaking, it's, not gonna it's, it's impossible that he does it again. Right. It's not, yeah, he's, he's <laughs> not going to throw for that many run for that many. Uh, I was, yeah, 9% touchdown percentage. Yeah, that's not happening. I was laughing because I remembered last year when Mahomes began the year, mm. We for the first two or three weeks, we were like, oh, yeah. Uh -oh. oh, no, he did it again. <laughs> Ends up with a uh, injury and the 5.4% touchdown percentage because, of course, that's normal. You, you're still the greatest player on earth. But but what if, right? Mm -hmm. The what if. Every time somebody else takes Lamar Jackson, I'm like, ha, you took a quarterback early. Oh, crap, they have Lamar Jackson. That's, <laughs> that's what I end up thinking. Um, we had some big news break late yesterday. We're going to talk about that at the top of the show. Today is the Bold Predictions show. So we will each be bringing you a very spicy. Why is it spicy? Uh, because it'll be wrong. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I don't know. Our, I, I will say this. Last year, and, and keep in mind, these are bold. We're trying to find things that are against the grain. That means low probability. But last year, we hit on several of these. Low probability, maximum glory. Yes. yes. What a great phrase. As Mama used to say. <laughs> Thank you. Andy. About all your predictions. Uh, no, last year, uh, there were some hits. The year before, not so much. We'll get into that when we begin that segment. But uh, we have a few reminders for you. Number one, if you want to play in the Megla Bowl, which is the largest fantasy football redraft uh, league there is, all the Foot Clan members are part of the Megla Bowl. Uh, I'm, I'm in it. And Jason. And you're in it, Andy which I hope counts towards it. Oh, yeah, for sure. If okay. you win, you get in the Listener League next year. Uh, oh, congratulations. Join thefoot.com for that. 
So that's exciting. Appreciate everybody who's following on Twitter at the FF Ballers, subscribing on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. And uh, everybody that leaves the reviews on Apple Podcasts, listens on Spotify, we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, by the way, by the way, lots of drafts were happening last night. Oh, we man. Can, we were looking at the ultimate draft kit, uh, like user accounts that were in there. You can see when drafts are happening. Yeah, we got to keep those servers strong. And what yeah. was wild is it goes right into our quick question because I was, in fact, in the middle of two drafts oh. last night. Leonard Fournette just sitting there at because, look, he's still at the top of the list because of ADP and he had been cut from Jacksonville. What do you do with Leonard Fournette? Where do people end the game of chicken? And you draft Fournette hoping that he lands somewhere. And then in the middle of both of those drafts, Boom, Leonard Fournette signed to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, he had already gone uh, in the draft of like you know eighth or ninth round by the time the news broke. But also, a few rounds earlier, Ronald Jones had been drafted, and everyone in the chat is pulling their hair out going, uh, what, is, what does this mean? Who's the lead back? Is Ronald Jones gone for fantasy now? Is Leonard Fournette still gone for fantasy? It's So, Andy... I'll throw it to you because you have been the Ronald Jones guy of yeah. this show for multiple years. How are you feeling? Or walk us through how yeah. how did you feel when the signing happened, and how are you feeling after you slept on it and had some time to think? Yeah, I've been I've been thinking about this pretty constantly. Uh, everybody wants the quick take. Uh, got to take part in the CBS St. Jude telethon last night. Want the quick take on the Fournette situation. And uh, after thinking through this, looking at what's going on in the backfield, I'll make my case for what I think is going to happen. And then you guys can weigh in. Tell me if you agree, disagree, how you're uh, looking at it from a rankings perspective. Number one, uh, it, it doesn't seem like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, at a minimum, trust Ronald Jones. When you trust somebody, you probably don't draft Keyshawn Vaughn where they did. You probably don't sign LaShawn McCoy, and then you don't come along and you sign Leonard Fournette. So there is a trust issue there. Number two, Bruce Arians loves experience. Mm -hmm. This team is an experienced football team. This is a team with a small window to win. So when somebody like Leonard Fournette is out there and you can go acquire him for less than Carlos Hyde money to come in and stabilize a running back room, why not go do it? That's the, that's the take I think Bruce Arians has for this team. Number three, we are nine days from the season. All reports from beat writers out of camp, take Bruce Arians' own word for what you will. Which is not much. Which is not much. But even like LaShawn McCoy talking about Ronald Jones and the steps he's taken and the way he looks in this back, Bruce Arians coming out this morning, Rojo's our guy, blah, blah, blah. Here's how I think the backfield breaks down. I think Ronald Jones starts the year as the starter. I think he gets two-thirds of the work but on first and second down. I think Fournette takes the other third of first and second down work, and I think McCoy is primarily their third down back if he can get it done in that role. Keyshawn Vaughn is irrelevant. He will return kicks and stand on the sidelines. So I yeah. don't. I have Ronald Jones ranked in my top 30 still. Okay. I do believe that he is the better running back than Leonard Fournette for this offense. The, 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 the kinds of boxes they're going to face, defenders, and the big playability of Ronald Jones, I believe, is superior than that of Fournette. So that's how I break it down. Now, it was panic alarm, and if you don't want to draft any of these guys because you don't have conviction that way, please don't. I Count mean, me in. I passed on Ronald Jones in our listener league, and uh, I'm super happy I did. Like I don't feel great with that situation, but if he comes out, and John Paulson pointed this out, he's going to come out as the starter. There's no question in my mind that he's going to start week one. If he has a nice week one, he has a soft week two matchup. You could have two strong weeks from Ronald Jones establishing himself, but I don't blame Bruce Arians for wanting to add depth to this running back room that contains the experience of Keyshawn Vaughn and the age of LaShawn McCoy. It makes sense for them. Yeah, what you were saying and how you described it is 100% identical to my belief. I think two-thirds of the first and second down work go to Ronald Jones, one-third to Leonard Fournette, LaShawn McCoy locking down the third role. That's how it starts the season. I do project that Leonard Fournette will take over that role. I, uh, so after the start of the season, which means I'm O-U-T 
<laughs> gone. I am like, they, you, who, who should you draft? No one. That's that is my opinion. That's sure. where I'm landing. I am I am gone. Bye bye. See you later. Backfield of the Bucks. So. Would you say that those with Ronald Jones and Fournette already, which is a large amount of fantasy football players, is there hope for them, Mike? Is there hope uh, for them, Jason? You, well, you're doing the the old fashioned Andy Holloway bar hang. Just how <laughs> long? How long can you stay up there? It, the answer is a lot shorter than you actually think. I yeah. Uh, I think that by the definition of the word hope, this is the situation where you need it. You need. You, Some, you, yeah, you, need you need hope, hope. but I'm, I'm with Jason. I am, I'm out on this. I have Leonard Fournette projected to eventually take over the job, have more rushing touchdowns. So maybe that's the guy you want to draft and hang on to. It's but possible you, you could get both of those players for almost nothing from the desperate owner. You could, and then you could end up with with two players on your bench, and you have no idea who you should ever be starting. This. We're we are we're back. We are back to Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber. Yeah, we are. We are. Which exactly. last year, yeah, Ronald Jones was the wink wink starter. He had some good games. And he, he had some great games. You never knew when it was gonna happen. He was on the field like forty five percent of the snaps. It was an absolute just uh, it was a trap for fantasy purposes. So it's it's hard to give the advice of saying completely avoid a backfield. There's at no point in the draft where these players have value. To, to add to your fantasy team, but that is 100% where I am. I'm If you if you want to stick your hand in the mouse trap and you get the cheese without <laughs> snapping your fingers, good for you. I'm not doing That's it. That's not where I get my cheese. Yeah, I, I'm going go to, to the, the grocery fridge. store. <laughs> I like that, though. And the funny thing is, is uh, the way it ended up in my rankings, I think Ronald Jones ended up at 26. He ended last year at 26, which is in the barber system, and you did have a problem knowing when to start him. So yeah, uh, it, it's almost like you'd rather him completely collapse in week one or two so you had one definitive starter in Leonard Fournette, but this is a high-value backfield potentially. That is yes. the one thing I will say. It wasn't necessarily a high-value backfield last year. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and it sucks for Keyshawn Vaughn. He clearly has not shown enough. He was off to a rough start because he was on the COVID list for longer than, than most of these players were, so he was already behind. Plus, Bruce Arians not really giving rookies the the reps that they need in camp, so it's a very unfortunate situation for the third round running back. I would go get him in dynasty though, because okay. Lashawn McCoy and Leonard like Fournette are probably both gone after this year, and who knows if Ronald Jones is around, right beyond this season. So Keyshawn Monk could just be the starter instantaneously if he shows out in in some of his uh, kick return work or something of that nature. News and notes from around the league. All right, looking at the news today, Alvin Kamara has practiced. Mm. So on ongoing contract uh, negotiations, he did write in all caps, life is good on his Twitter. So that is really all we need to know, right? Well, and he's, he's powered up. He's got a star power. It was just a, is that, that it was was a shot, in the, shot in the back. <laughs> I, I will say this from a from a fear standpoint, him being back at camp, saying the right things, doing the right things, I'm 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 less fearful of the holdout. Obviously, the information with the back issue, um, and and the pain that you know needs an epidural, which I'm usually familiar with that during childbirth, childbirthing, which is a little painful. Did you so, get an epidural when your I wife did. gave birth? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, I was feeling a little tense. I yeah, my you know I was like. Starting to sweat. I was like, Doc, give me that up. Give me that up. Sir, please leave. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I have my doubts about the health, but Alvin Kamara on the field is a top three running Stud. back. Yeah. Alvin, uh, I'm sorry, Amari Cooper, limited for now four consecutive practices. Jason talked about this on the show yesterday. Uh, the Cowboys have downplayed it. They say he's good to go. A, We've been in this same spot with Amari Cooper, though, where it's like everything's fine, everything's fine, to the point of a bad Amari Cooper on the field. Yes, that's the issue. I, I, I did move him down a little bit just because we, we've we seen him hampered by injuries, play through them, and suck on the field. And th this is a minority report situation. I don't know if you've seen <laughs> what Jerry Jones has been saying, 
But they're talking about how they have the technology. What we got? Pre oh, because of the pre injury. This is the pre injury uh, that, that, that they're tracking his muscles and the tenseness. Wait, of this the, is a thing. This, yeah. Yes, yeah. And I the saw reason this. he's doing individual drills and not out there at team is because they're seeing that he's at a point where the higher odds of of tearing it. So they're giving him rest. So this is. This is like I've the always, walking, but this is precautionary. Wow, that's one. That's cool. Two. I've always thought of Jerry Jones as Elon Musk. I mean, those two are just <laughs> simul uh, just together. Uh, that's pretty neat, though. Yeah, I mean, if I don't want that scan. I don't want to know what's going on. Here's how I view it. It if, turns out the scanner actually ripped the muscle, though. Oh <laughs> crap! If if this technology is right, this is so good for players like Amari Cooper to be able to keep them healthy. I don't trust it. <laughs> so. Will Fuller's like, can I get me some of that yeah, machine? Yeah. All right. Dwayne Haskins is the week one starter. Ron Rivera confirmed it against the Eagles. So that's what we expected, but it's set in stone. Anthony Lynn confirmed Tyrod Taylor is also the week one starter against the Bengals. Look at this. Coach is just announcing who their starting quarterback will be for week one. What have they done, Jason? Their entire competitive advantage it has been completely spoiled. What the defenses will know exactly what they're gonna do. Yeah, Matt Nagy. I mean, he's really ahead of this. Yeah, <laughs> way out in front. Hey, this is really good news. Um, Chris Herndon back at practice. So I love Chris Herndon's opportunity in PPR formats yes. to soak up targets. And then Denzel Mims. Denzel Mims. Let's not forget a second round wide receiver going to a team that has. No outside wide receivers right now with Brashad Perryman hurting. Mims is a player that in the very, very beginning of this offseason I thought would have a great chance at being out there, and now he's practicing it again. Is. Yeah, the, It's the, interesting. The Jets did draft him in the second round. He's not a player you're going to draft for your fantasy team. I mean, this is great news for, for Dynasty Leagues because he was a you know often an early second-round rookie pick. But he he will be a name to pay attention to because he's – uh, he's his, talented. He's a yes, big guy. He's he's very talented. And his athletic profile is that of could turn into an elite outside wide receiver. Mike, why don't you take this next one? Oh man! All right. ESPN reporting: Patriots running back Damian Harris hand has a hand injury. Could miss the team's opening game against the Dolphins. This sucks, man. This this is terrible news. Uh Damian Harris, if you if you haven't been following along, running back for the Patriots has been tearing up the Patriots training camp. All signs looked like he was going to be the starter. Now he's back up against it where someone else will have the opportunity week 1, Sony, Lamar, who knows, but it it really stinks for that late round chance at a starting running back. I have no interest in Damian Harris now. None. Yeah, me me too. I in our listener league draft, we were so late. I mean, I'm we're taking the you know, the Chris Thompsons and Boston Scotts of the world and here's Sony just falling. I was like, "Will he make it back?" He was so far down that he was like the crazy late lottery pick. And he is currently. Pre Are you still draft? Would you draft Sony now? At that late, one hundred. Who's the week one starting yeah, running I would, back I would for draft the Patriots? Sony now. Absolutely. Mm, I would. I'm not going to draft Sony. Yeah, no, I, I would. I thought it was great value last night. But James White, you win. Draft him. Eh, is this worth the discussion? I don't know because I know he's going to dig in. What? But you went like zero RB yesterday. Yes. You had Sony Michelle in those late rounds would have been a great guaranteed week one starter for you. And by great, mm -hmm. I, of course, mean mediocre. Yeah. That, well, that's, but, but that's better but than that's some like, of those odds that you have in those late rounds. Uh, maybe, because I'm, I'm taking... You drafted Zach Moss. Yeah. I'm, look, I'm taking a guy that should see the high value. It's reported he will take the high value uh, reps for the Buffalo Bills. You would start Zach Moss week one over, over Sonny Michelle today, knowing what you know about Damian Harris. I, are we 100% sure that Sonny Michelle is the starter? Let's say yes. Okay, well that's <laughs> no. I'm saying, I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. I think I think we think he's the starter. I, uh, I don't. Honestly, I don't know. I, okay. At this point, I do not know. I don't trust Sony Michelle at all. I will say this about my strategy: when you're going zero RB, the 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 theory is uh, anti fragility and and actually, you know, you're taking players who can get better as the season goes along. So it's not so much about week one. It's not about getting the right. guy who's going to get those early volume. It's it's as the season goes along, what could happen to make Sony better? Not 
not much. I mean, you know and, what I mean? Like, and speaking of anti fragility, would you put Sony Michelle on the list of people you want to target? I would not. 247 carries last year. That's nice to know that you're going to get that. You if you're might. waiting for other players like Zach Moss you or Naeem might. Hines or Chris Thompson to figure out what you got, it, 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 it's something. I would that, start Chris Thompson week one over Sony Michelle, that's for sure. All right, Mohamed Sanu was released. The Patriots are not perfect. They have traded a second-round pick for uh, a box of nothing. For a a half-a-year rental of, wait for it, Mohamed Sanu. It didn't go well. That is a bad transaction. But this is, you know, you you were talking recently on the podcast about Nikhil Harry, about the upside of someone. And when I look at Nikhil Harry, I was like, man, I'm not even sure he's ahead of Mohamed Sanu, this brings clarity to that situation where a late round flyer on Nikhil Harry, I think, could I could agree work with out. that. Yeah. Josh Gordon re signed by the Seahawks. We Yay. don't we don't really care for fantasy purposes. Yeah. He was not that involved last year. Uh and probably will never be fantasy relevant again, I don't think. No, uh, look, there's not enough to go around when for Russell Wilson's work for DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, who are both going to be great. E- there's nothing left for Josh Gordon to have weekly value. Before we get into the super spicy, bold predictions for 2020, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Look, fellas, we I've been talking about Manscaped for a long time. If you haven't gotten in, look, shame on you. You got to check it out. They are the best in men's hygiene. Their, their, their body hair trimmer is elite. Look, when you're, when you're taking care of the body hair, you don't want to have nicks, you don't want to have snags, you don't want to have injuries, and that's what the Lawnmower 3.0 brings you. It's the best hygiene tool for the modern man. It's got a ceramic blade, skin-safe technology, like I said, it's going to keep you protected. And they've forever changed the grooming game with their perfect package. 3.0 comes with the new and improved Lawnmower, performance boxer briefs, a travel bag. Like look, and they've got you they've got you covered. You got nose hairs? Manscaped's got you covered. You got got the fingernails you need to clip and with a with a, just a perfectly sized travel thing. Manscaped has you covered. And for a limited time, subscribers get two free gifts, the travel bag and the patented high-performance anti-chafing Manscaped boxer briefs. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code footballers at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code footballers. Manscaped. And- you- oh, go oh. ahead, Jason. I was just going to make sure that the Foot Clan is aware that it is not too late for your drafts. If you're in the Megla Bowl, if you're, you've got a draft coming up this weekend, our draft is the day before NFL kickoff, six days from now. The, the ultimate draft kit, that's what I was using during the Listener League draft. It is phenomenal to be able to look at so much information quickly at a glance, have printable cheat sheets, have everybody broken down in tiers. And we are still updating it. So like when the chaos was going on last night, we were jumping in as soon as we possibly could to update Fournette, Ronald Jones, the whole Buccaneers situation. Yeah, you want to make sure that you aren't the fool at the draft. There's always a couple fools whose information is outdated. (laughs) Don't you, let it be you. What's the, what's the rule? If like if you don't recognize the fool in the room, you're it's the probably fool. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. You won't regret it. People get it once you once you're in. Once you get the ultimate yeah. draft kit, and you're like, oh, that was really helpful. I like that. Next year, I'm doing that again. Yeah, uh, I believe it's something like ninety something percent come back every year because it's such a valuable tool for them. All right, I just I almost jumped in because. Uh, just to add some more to the Arians' statements about Ronald Jones, mm-hmm. again, maybe meaningless. He said, it's his job, nothing has changed for him, and added that Fournette was a heck of an insurance piece. So uh, they'll find out what role he has out of camp. That's the latest out of Tampa Bay Buccaneer uh, okay. land. And also, just because perfect timing for stubborn Mike, uh, the Buffalo Bills... According to The Athletic, uh, talking about Devin Singletary's fumbling issues, and if they continue into the regular season, you could see Zach Moss take over as the lead back almost immediately. Woo! Okie dokie. So your zero RB team would be uh, appreciative. Yes, they would. Ridiculously Bold Predictions.
All right, we said it earlier. We actually hit on some of these last year. Uh, I shouldn't sound so surprised. They are informed well, bold predictions. They're not random bold predictions. That is still hard. I mean, you are you're throwing haymakers out here. Yeah. So, we, we've hit on plenty over the years. Yeah, and uh, I have a my annual article, the 32 Shamelessly Bold Predictions article, coming out very soon. Last year, I had some hits in that one about Lamar Jackson leading them to the division title being a steal. Jared Cook having his career high in touchdowns. Jameis Winston throwing a, a monumental amount of touchdowns. Juju regressing. I also had some... In interceptions was actually your... Oh, did I say... You oh, said yeah, I said I said interceptions. He did right, yeah. both. You you predicted a bold call of twenty interceptions, and he's like, "Hold, hold my, my beer." beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did have a couple of whiffs, uh, like this one: Kalen Balage not relinquishing the starting running back role and putting up eleven hundred total yards last year. He he could go for it again this year. Do we have a report on whether that panned out? I still don't even know what team Kalen Balage is on. <laughs> he's on nobody's team. Uh, all right. Who wants to kick it off with their first bold prediction for 2020? All right, I'll kick it off. I'm excited to do this one because, look, this is five years running. Every year, if, you, if you're new, welcome in. If you've been listening for a long time, every single bold prediction episode since 2016, I have come up with my fantasy bust team as a team, the team that I look at and I say, you know, we're getting it wrong and it's not going to go as well as we think. In uh, 2016, it was the Panthers. Cam and Kelvin drafted super high, both stank. In 2017, it was the Washington team with Terrell Pryor, Jordan Reed, James Crowder. Pryor. Rob oh my goodness. Kelly. I know. <laughs> Mike. All those names that were being drafted high, they all stunk. Uh, then I had the very infamous in 2018, the beginning of the end for the Patriots, which they won the Super they Bowl. They did win the Super Bowl <laughs> that year. However,. This, oh, is a fan yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. a fantasy show, and I'm, I was spot on then. Gronk was a second-round pick. Hogan was a fourth-round pick. Josh Gordon was a fourth-round pick. Brady was fifth. They all stunk for fantasy, even though they went on to win the Super Bowl. And then last year was the Cleveland Browns. They were being drafted so high. Baker as the quarterback four. Chubb as the quarterback eight. Beckham, mm. wide receiver five. Running back eight. That, that too. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those questions of – I, I knew I was going with a team. I, I got to stick to it. And I almost, at the end of everything, went with an opposite. I almost went with a the bounce breakout team? back oh. Browns. But sorry, Browns fans, I couldn't justify it. <laughs> Not that bold. <laughs> um, this year's team, after being close to looking at Arizona and the Falcons, and but I, I, I go through my process that I do every year for this, and the team was clear as day to me. It's and I've talked them up Narrative Street and I'm talking them down now. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are my bust fantasy team of 2020. Mm. You have and I went mm. to the ESPN live drafts. The it's most very timely as well. The most common, uh, you know, platform that's being played on right now, and the most recent real drafts that are happening. Tom Brady is the quarterback seven in the sixth round. Now, we've talked. I've talked recently. Like, he didn't go there to game manage. He went there to prove how great he is. But you want to know really why he went there? To win a Super Bowl. To prove that he can win elsewhere. And he, when he's not throwing picks, he's not going to need to throw the Jameis Winston numbers. Godwin and Chris Evans are the wide receiver six and seven right now. They're second Mike, round Mike picks. Evans. What did I say? You said Chris Evans. You, are, you, have, Dude. you have the Avengers on the mind. Deep breath. <laughs> Paris Hilton wants Paris you to Hilton calm and down. Chris Evans. Goodness. <laughs> Look, they're both being drafted as top 10 wide receivers right now. I could see Mike over there going like, man, I really don't want to interrupt him here. Yeah, but he, he did say flowing. Chris Evans. <laughs> like, you can't draft Chris Evans. Nah. Captain America yeah, is the not captain, available. The captain is, if look, you could, if you would, it was you Chris Evans, this would not be my bust 101. Team. That He's would... calling for an Avengers bust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I No, for sure I'm drafting Chris Evans. 100%. Okay. I think too hard to tackle. Incredible speed. I, I dare say impossible to tackle Captain America. Yeah. I feel like maybe trip him. No, probably There's not. There's no way. He just jumped to the end zone. Um, <laughs> Gronk. Gronk right now, this blows my mind. He's being drafted as the seventh tight end. He's in the sixth round. He is splitting time with three other tight ends. 
I, I think it's absolutely madness that all of these players are being drafted this high. That's not to say I don't not like. Not a lot of room for error. No, no room for error. And this is a shortened offseason where you have a, you, the greatest quarterback of all time, but an old quarterback who has known one system coming to a new system. And that new system, which has thrived with other quarterbacks, they usually struggle year one. Carson Palmer struggled year one. Like, you know, we've, we've talked about that before. Uh, you know, and the running back situation, we brought that up at the beginning of the show. There's, I think there is way more risk and little upside here with almost any player being drafted from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You're drafting everyone at their ceiling outside of Chris Godwin, uh, you know, at the current average draft position. I, I, I think this is a team to avoid for fantasy in 2020. I posted a give me your bold prediction thread on Twitter. And I'm reading through them. And the amount that are Tampa Bay related is incredible. Mm. Uh, and then the amount that are like this, you know, Mike Evans breaking the single season touchdown record that Randy Moss holds with Tom Brady was a bold prediction. Next person, Mike Evans finishes outside the top 25 wide receivers. Wow. It does feel like, you know, there is a wide range of outcomes for them, but you're drafting them at the top of those. The Buccaneers defense is so much better than what they were at the beginning half of last year. And if this team is actually good, which I'm not saying that they're going to be a bad NFL team, I'm saying that they're not going to pay off at the fantasy value of where you're drafting them. If their defense is better, Tom Brady's not going to want to throw 5,000 yards. He's going to want to hand it off to this running back group and slow the clock down and win the game. That's what he's there to do is get Ws. All right. My bold prediction, my first one, uh, I should have worn a hat today. I would have turned it around backwards for this. I one. got you covered over All here. Right, Mike's got it. We got the snap back. My first bold prediction is that Matthew Stafford mm. will end the year as a top five fantasy mm. quarterback. How mm. does that sound, Mike? That sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> he has been a top 10 quarterback. This is a little bit of a history lesson. Matthew Stafford has been a top 10 quarterback six times in his career, but it hasn't happened since 2017 because last year, while he had a nice start, he went down with an injury. He has always been a yardage machine. When you think about the players that you can almost pencil 4,000 plus in for, it's like Matt Ryan and Matthew Stafford. You know those guys are going to get it done. Here's a little bit of a reminder of what happened last year in Detroit. Through the first nine weeks, Matthew Stafford had more f top five weeks than Patrick Mahomes. He had more top five weeks than Dak Prescott. He had the same amount as Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson. He was not good. He was great. He was elite. He has elite deep ball weapons. Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones. Mm -hmm. He has elite red zone weapons with those bigger wide receivers and now TJ Hawkinson in the mix. We talk about letting Russ cook. What did Detroit do last year? They completely changed what they do as an offense. They threw out the cooking book. Yeah. They they say, this, these are bland. They just, Daryl Bevel changed everything. In 2018, they went deep uh, on uh, first half first downs 5% of the time. They didn't let Matthew Stafford be Matthew Stafford. Last year, they did it on 30% of attempts. Wow, that's nice. And you know what? The other thing that people don't realize is it worked and they won ball games. This was a very competitive team last year. They started the season 2-0-1. Oh, if you remember, they tied Arizona in that third game. They lost by four points the next week to Kansas City in a shootout. They lost by one point the next week against Green Bay, who ended up 13-3. and And then all of a sudden, the Matthew Stafford goes down halfway through the year and they obviously derailed the whole season. So you look at the final record and you say, this team stunk. But the aggressive Matthew Stafford wins them ball games. He has all the weapons to do it. What does it equate to? Let's remind you of the pace. 5,000 yards and 38 touchdowns. That was his week one through nine pace last year. I think he pick up, picks up where he left, left off. I think they changed their scheme completely. I do not think that their running back room is in any better shape than it was last year to succeed. Matthew Stafford is how this team will win ball games, and if he does what he did last year, you've got a top five fantasy quarterback. I like it. I like Stafford. And you can wear your cap backwards yeah. all year long. Yeah, you, you get the snap back, you throw it on backwards. All right, my first prediction, that is part of the bold. I don't know bold, any of yours. The bold prediction. 
Number one, Brian Edwards, rookie wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders. He will be the number one rookie wide receiver for fantasy purposes okay. at the end of the year. Okay. And you might say, why is that spicy? Uh, look at the first round. <laughs> How many wide receivers were drafted in the first round? Ruggs. Uh, by the Las Vegas Raiders, you had uh, Justin Jefferson to the Vikings, Ayukin. Dra uh, Jalen Rager, Brandon Ayukin, J Jerry Judy, CeeDee Lamb. That's six guys in the first round, and uh, maybe I'm forgetting one off the top of my head. That's a lot of elite talent. That's a lot of very high NFL draft capital spent on a wide receiver. Brian Edwards was drafted in the third round. He's 6'3", 212, so he's got the frame to get it done. He has the lowest breakout age of all the rookie wide receivers. My man Brian Edwards in South Carolina, in the SEC, SEC, broke out during his age of 17 and 18. The dude was 17 years old pulling in a 20% target share in the SEC. He went on to become the all-time leader for South Carolina in receptions and receiving yards. This dude was locked and loaded. He was going to be a very high draft pick. What happens? He tore some cartilage in his knee. It happens every single year. We see top uh, top prospects end up dropping in the draft because they have an injury right before the draft happens. It's a bummer, but Brian Edwards dropped down to the third round. Now I want people to remember, Derek Carr is – Derek Carr is he, he's, it's just he's a fun guy to kind of like tell – jokes about and you, you take your take your cheap shots Sit in the car yeah you take your cheap shots at Derek Carr it's it's a national pastime now it's just it's a fun thing to do but he has supported some serious send in the car send in the car thank you it's he been had a long time he has supported some serious fantasy wide receivers in 2015 Michael Crabtree was the wide receiver 18 with 146 targets and Amari Cooper was the wide receiver 22 as a rookie that's, a, that's an important thing to notice. Wide receiver 22 as a rookie. The next year, Michael Crabtree, a top 12 wide receiver, while Amari Cooper, wide receiver 13, almost had two wide receiver ones from Derek Carr. Henry Ruggs, uh, the Las Vegas, their first pick, he has uh, elite traits. He has elite speed, even by NFL standards. He's a player you have to take in the first round. But now everything that has happened with Terrell Williams – out for the season, Brian Edwards, the steady drum beat that has been beating all entire uh, training camp long. I think that Brian Edwards is going to be a target machine along with Darren Waller, and Henry Ruggs will just be there to, you know, hit the big play occasionally. He but is I've, the wide receiver. He was the fifteenth wide receiver off the board this year. So that's you. how bold that call is. The fifteenth rookie wide receiver. Thank this you. This so is I'd, such go a ahead. good show. Just uh, <laughs> the fantasy footballers because. I do this for a living. I had no idea that breakout age. I had not come across that yet, and and <laughs> that's that's a really good piece of information. That's an important stat for yes. Uh, it it correlates very strongly because and and just to like here's a brief history of breakout age. If a player is going into college as a still as a growing human being, they haven't reached which like they the, all are. Yes, it, like he's not into his full grown man body yet, and he's out there. Me dominant. neither. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get the maturation. <laughs> Look, and he goes out there and he dominates. Other uh, other uh, college players who are already twenty years old. That's a big deal compared to someone who turns twenty one and then they dominate on on college players. It's it is a very very big deal. So I'm I'm all in, Brian Edwards. But, well, and it's not just talent. Yes, voice of public opinion. Will you guarantee he's the best rookie on his own team this year? Well, if I'm calling for him to be the top rookie wide receiver, but will you then... guarantee it? <laughs> I guarantee it. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, you have to have the opportunity. He has it right before him. Thank you, Tyrell Williams, for that opportunity. Get well soon. That's All right, Jason. One. I liked it. I knew you were doing that this whole week. Uh, yeah, I didn't know your argument, but I knew that was one of your picks. I, I think that's a really fun, bold pick. Just, I'm to, going... just to follow it up, though, like where would you draft him? I, look, you don't have to go crazy just at the end of your last draft. Ra last round. It could be, or even you know, just one of your three final picks, positional picks. Or in the first round if you're in a draft with Mike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's fine. I'll just take Antonio Gibson then. Yeah. All right. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick with another wide receiver, and I'm actually putting your two uh, bold predictions together here between Matthew Stafford I and wide receivers. I can't believe you are doing this. I can't either. Marvin Jones Jr. scores as many fantasy points as Kenny Galladay, even though they're such smooth routes from Kenny G. So let me hear what you're saying here. Marvin Jones, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. top five fantasy wide receiver. No, I am not saying that. And I don't have Kenny Galladay as a top five wide receiver as well. I don't like it. (laughs) This is a bold (laughs) prediction. But let me lay out my case for you in a couple of quick bullet points. Last year, Kenny Galladay was tied for the league lead in receiving touchdowns in the NFL with 11. Marvin Jones was on pace to score 12 touchdowns with Matthew Stafford. And this actually makes sense. If you look at the last three years combined, Marvin Jones has the fifth most receiving touchdowns in the NFL. And he's missed 10 games during that time. So over the last three years, he's missed you know, not a full season, but more than half of a season. Mm -hmm. And he's got the fifth most receiving touchdowns. Fantasy points come from touchdowns. Now, sometimes they come three in a game and it's not very consistent, but they come for Marvin Jones last year. Kenny Galladay dominated. He only had 65 receptions and he was on pace for 70 with Matthew Stafford. Marvin Jones was on pace for 84 receptions with Matthew Stafford. That's better. So the receptions are there. The touchdowns are there. Uh, and and here's the thing. Uh, the It's not like Marvin Jones is a slot wide receiver dink and dunk guy, so the receptions are higher. Marvin Jones has averaged 15.1 yards per reception, which is the 11th best of qualified wide receivers, those who have at least 33 receptions a year over the last three years. Um, and, you know, it, that that's a really good number. Now, Kenny Galladay's is even better than that. So Matthew Stafford, to Andy's bold prediction, he's going to air it out. Both these guys are going to get touchdowns, but here's the way I view it. Will Marvin Jones be the number one target? No. 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 But will he lead the team in receptions? Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> I believe he will. I, You know, before this, before this argument, before this bold prediction... I wrote that down and I go, you know what? I know this is, I know I'm being, I'm finding a bold prediction, but I wanted to know how far off I was. I went to my numbers that had already been statted out. Marvin Jones leading the team in receptions, a few ahead of Kenny Galladay. So he won't be the number one target, but he will lead the team in receptions. Will he lead the team in receiving yards? Probably not. But will he lead the team in touchdowns? I'm going to say yes. Is he being picked 65 players after Kenny Galladay? Yes. Should he be? No. That is I feel my like argument. I'm taking a test right now. I, I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm shocked, and then I'm telling myself, of course I should be shocked. It's a bold prediction show. Yes. Also, uh, I have Marvin Jones with more receptions than Kenny Collins. There you go, because it makes <laughs> sense for these players' experience, history, archetype, everything. I had the... Uh, I traded for Kenny Galladay in one of our leagues last year. So excited to get him in the lineup, and I had him for two weeks. In both weeks were quote unquote Marvin Jones weeks, mm. where it ju- the touchdowns go his way. Marvin Jones, do you remember a couple years ago that insane fifty fifty ball percentage? Like yes, where, where on the deep passes what, was, he came down with like all of them. I think he was a he was a top twelve wide receiver that year, yeah. right? Yeah, Ma- Marvin Jones is. I love that yours backs up my Matthew Stafford take, though. I really appreciate because that. Both of these guys are great. Teamwork. Here's what this isn't. This is not an anti-Kenny Galladay take. Kenny Galladay is great. This is a pro-Marvin Jones take. Marvin Jones is being drafted too late, and yes, he will be less consistent than Kenny Galladay. There's rationale. You know, people aren't dumb in their drafts, and, you know, there's rationale why he's being drafted so far behind. But at the end of the year, I think their fantasy points will be so extremely close, or wait, the same because that's the bold prediction. Yeah, that is the bold prediction. And, uh, yeah, they got Marvin Hall there, too, for deep balls. It's going to be fun to watch Detroit see if they lean into Matthew Stafford's skill set again this year. All right, am I up? You yep. are. All right, I'm 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 pretty stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're stupid because of the, the take you're about to drop? Yeah, I mean, I just don't – I could have picked anything out of a, a million different bold predictions, and nope. I'm deciding to go down with this one. Do we have – Can I we – have, we have breaking news. Breaking news. I just wanted to double check because, Mike, you looked up yours. Andy Holloway as well has Marvin Jones, the leading do receptions. I really? Yes, okay. you do. So it doesn't sound very bold then. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fair. <laughs> that got me. <laughs> and yet everyone was like, this is crazy bold. Is, this is the bold prediction we all already had, apparently, uh, reception-wise, yeah. but didn't know it. Um, my second bold prediction, I, I might as well lean in here. I mean, I've already got Joe Mixon as a my guy. AJ Green might as well be. I've talked up Joe Burrow, his camp performances, how he's been impressing me. So why not go with Joe Burrow, a record-breaking rookie season, breaks the touchdown record at the quarterback position, and the Cincinnati Bengals find a way to challenge for a wild card spot this year. Oof. So do they get yes. it? Do they get it? I know, do they get in? I knew that question was coming, and of course they do, because this is yes. a bold predict. <laughs> it's a bold pro- uh, prediction episode. So why not? Look, they challenge for a wild card spot. Eventually, they fall a little bit short. <laughs> Bold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I, I like the fantasy outlook for a number of these players. I even think Tyler Boyd could very well surprise. He's being largely ignored in fantasy mm. football. And uh, what I like about this, I like Zach Taylor. I like the fact that Joe Burrow is going to have a chance at this. There are situations as a rookie quarterback, you don't have a shot. If you're Dwayne Haskins, you have no shot at breaking rookie records or being fantasy relevant in an offense that was handing the ball to Adrian Peterson four times every three plays. But the Bengals do have that shot. They dropped back, their passers last year dropped back 665 times. That was fifth in football. I think he breaks the rookie record, which is 27 touchdowns. That's Baker Mayfield. I think he can... Uh, I, the one rookie season I don't think he can top fantasy wise is that Cam Newton rookie season from 2011. That's just going to be, you're going to need to have somebody come in that has the rushing capability that Cam Newton did to break that record. But they have, uh, this is according to Warren Sharp, the Bengals project to face the, uh, number one fastest schedule by pace of play, which fits right in with what Zach Taylor is doing. They have the number eight easiest schedule and projected defenses in terms of passing efficiency from the 2020 season. And the reason I actually believe in the team having some success is because unlike previous years in Cincinnati, they actually went out and they spent a lot of money on their defense. Um, They had a bit of a spending spree on that side of the ball where where they struggled. They still have Geno Atkins in the middle and they've improved their secondary quite a bit. So look, it's a bold prediction show. You see teams go from, uh, you know, the bottom tier in terms of projected wins out of Vegas into that surprise category. This one feels like a, a tough one. I mean, they're projected for five and a half wins. That's fourth worst uh, of any team. But I really believe in the fantasy options in Cincinnati. The way they play football is going to be conducive for that. So I'm, I'm putting it out there. Joe Burrow right. breaks the record, and the Bengals are competitive. All right. Last year on this show, this is where I dropped the Austin Eckler is going to be a running back one at the time. Mike, what, for the record, insane. Let me let me do this for you, Mike, because you don't. Ah, yes. Mike Thank went you. two for two on this show last year. Both Thank bold. You. Both very bold. One was Cooper Cup having uh, leading the league in touchdowns, and then the second one was Austin Eckler at top twelve, which we. We're not really on board with last year. Yeah, I, I was on an island <laughs> about that one. Uh, I know I'm. Not, I won't be so much on an island with this one. And look, uh, it's not as hot and spicy as a top twelve pick for Austin Eckler, but it's still pretty spicy. Wait, are you going back to Austin Eckler? No. Oh, okay. I'm calling for the new Austin Eckler. Chris Thompson will be a top twenty running back by the end of the year. Jacksonville Jaguars. And here is why. Let's look at that backfield. What do we like? Chris Thompson, yes. top 20. Yes, okay. Chris Thompson. I'm, I'm just processing. And Jacksonville has created a murky backfield situation. These are the places that you can take advantage of and find a breakout candidate. Who is the starter right now for Jacksonville? Is it Reichwell Armstead? He's got his supporters, his believers. Divino Zigbo? It's Chris Thompson. Even James Robinson has people in his camp, the rookie. Whose role is secure? Chris Thompson. Since 2015, Chris Thompson has averaged over four and a half targets a game. That's a 74 target a year pace. Since 2015, even with my man missing 20 games, he still has the 11th most targets to the running back position since he has, uh, since he has started really playing. 
This team had Leonard Fournette see 100 targets last year. Now, let me ask you this. Do we believe that Jacksonville will be seeing more positive game scripts oh, they're gonna or more deep. negative game their, scripts? Their defense, look, uh, spoiler alert for our week one episodes, play against Jacksonville. Start your guys against that defense. So that sounds to me like they're going to need a running back who is a pass-catching specialist on the field more often than not. That is Chris Thompson. He averages over nine yards per reception. That is an elite number. In 2017, when he really broke out, six of those first seven weeks, he was a top 20 guy. He was top 15 in five of six of those games. He was a fantasy superstar off the waiver wire. In 2018, he started with two top two or top 10 weeks yet again, but unfortunately went down to injury. 2019, he was in the top 20 in two of the first three weeks. Unfortunately, an injury stopped him yet again. That is the only thing in the way of Chris Thompson. Feels like maybe the bold prediction part is, of this is, is, is him Chris staying Thompson, healthy. Look, he does have a he does have one year where he was healthy for all 16 games in 2016. But he's not finished the year as a top 20 before, so that, no. is, that is something he hasn't done. No, he, he has never done it, but the opportunity is so great in front of him. The offensive coordinator, Jay Gruden, that's who, that's who Chris Thompson has done all of his damage with. Jay Gruden convinced the team, we need to get Chris Thompson into this backfield. Releasing Leonard Fournette is, is huge for the, the opportunity, in my opinion, for, for, for Chris Thompson. His ADP he has taken a bit of a jump. Uh, for people drafting this, you know, right now and this weekend. But I believe that Chris Thompson, by the end of the year, can be a top 20 guy and a real fantasy difference maker. Yeah, I, uh, I don't, I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> I love it! Oh, Diamond! yes! Let's go! Yes! I totally, I get it. I mean, look. You totally tricked me! Yes! That was my acting. <laughs> yes, I got you so good as an actor. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, hey, I'm going to read you four bold predictions from the listeners uh, on Twitter. I want you to handicap them for me, okay? okay? So just give me percentage odds of it happening, and that's all I want. Uh, Gardner Minshew, top 10. Ooh, top 10? Uh, I think it can happen, I will, but I will put it down at like 15%. That was the exact number I had. Justin Jefferson outscoring Adam Thielen. Zero percent. Ze well, injury... <laughs> No, five five percent. Anthony Miller, a top fifteen wide receiver, zero percent, one one percent, twenty percent. Wow! I almost my my bold prediction. Anthony Miller. My bold prediction was so close to being Anthony Miller. Is you know how I had Marvin Jones it, it scores as many right. points as Kenny Galladay oh. was that Anthony Miller scores Anthony as many Miller points. Your, is, your is Alan good. Robinson fade knows no bounds. <laughs> <laughs> you darn right. Uh, last one, Jonathan Taylor, top five running back. Top five. Thirty-five percent. Twenty percent, but I will say this. I immediately went to the schedule uh, already looking at the, who Jacksonville is playing week one, because I was gonna try to get my start of the weekend for week one already. And <laughs> oh <they> my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> they play the Colts. Yes. You want to give an opportunity for the young gun to you know, I mean, I was like, do I make it Marlon Mack? Do I go Jonathan Taylor? Yeah, Marlon Mack could end up being like the best running back in week one and Seriously. nobody nobody plays him. Uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show today. Daniel Jones signed Logo Football, $74.49 for an up-and-coming quarterback. And no, there. it wasn't me who bought it. No, no, not yet. He'll bite oh, off you. Uh, he'll bite off you for $200. Contact him at <laughs> FF Hitman on that Twitter. That could be a whole industry, flipping stuff you get on Pristine Auction straight to Mike. Just buy your Gibson, your Jarwin. <laughs> Your Daniel Jones, your Chris Thompson gear. Get it cheap on Pristine Auction at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Then, then flip it to Mike for double the I've, money. I've heard worse ideas in my life. <laughs> All right. Guys, start buying it up. All right. That is it for today's show. Thank you for the bold predictions on Twitter. And uh, look forward to the Bengals winning the Super Bowl. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.